Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's JPR, and welcome back to another video. Generation 3 brought about many significant changes to the franchise, but perhaps none were as important as the introduction of abilities. Abilities are essentially an extra power that each Pokémon possesses, and sometimes these abilities can be the defining characteristic of those Pokémon. So I did some digging to find out which are the best abilities introduced in every generation. For the record, I'm going to do my best to avoid signature abilities and go with ones that have had a more widespread impact on the metagame. And that also means I don't have to dwell on super obvious stuff, like Wonder Guard. Let's get into it. Starting with Generation 3, because hey, were you listening? The first two gens didn't have any abilities. The one that we have to pick is Intimidate. It doesn't matter what format you're playing in, singles, VGC, heck, even Nuzlocke's, Intimidate has always been one of the most valuable tools to have on any team. Having the chance to lower your opponent's attack stack can either give you a free chance to set up right at the start of the match, or it can afford you a safer switch in later on. This ability has so much versatility for such a simple effect. For generations now, Game Freak has been trying to nerf it to have less influence in VGC by making more and more Pokemon immune to it, but despite their best efforts, Intimidate continues to run rampant in Gen 9. Another great pick from Gen 3 would be Shadow Tag. This ability is only available on three different fully evolved Pokemon, Wobbuffet, Gothitelle, and Mega Gengar. But despite that relatively small sample size, Shadow Tag has proven how incredibly effective it is. Wobbuffet essentially gets to secure a free kill on nearly any Pokemon of its choice thanks to Shadow Tag combined with Counter or Mirror Coat. Mega Gengar could trap and revenge kill nearly anything in the game, making it one of the fastest Pokemon to be banned from Gen 6 competitive singles. And Gothitelle is currently being used in VGC as a great trapping Pokemon, especially when combined with Parish Song, as demonstrated by Wolf Glick. It may not be the easiest strategy in the world, but it's hard to argue against results. Shadow Tag was actually meant to be the hidden ability of Chandelure in Gen 5, but Game Freak must have realized that this would have thrown the global economy into a recession and decided to quietly change it to Infiltrator before it was finally released in Gen 6. That did not stop them from making Mega Gengar, though, who was essentially just Chandelure, but better. So who can really say what's going through their minds? Likewise, Huge Power has a similarly small distribution, but equally large results. Between Azumarill, Mega Mawile, and Diggersby, these Pokémon can wreak absolute havoc. Mega Mawile actually broke the game's stat ceiling with huge power, so you can bet a Sucker Punch from this thing is tearing a hole in your team, if not wiping out your entire Legion. Speaking of huge power, that's a great segue into Gen 4, because that gen basically introduced Diet Huge Power in the form of Adaptability. Adaptability essentially doubles the stab value you get on any moves of your own type. So instead of their power being increased by 1.5 times, now it's a big old times two. Virtually every single Pokemon with adaptability is a threat in some way, shape, or form. Whether it be Crawdont, Porygon Z, Basket Legion, or Mega Lucario, all these Pokemon simply hit way too hard. But moving from an offensive ability to a defensive one, Gen 4 gave us an ability that we are only just now seeing in its full glory. Unaware. Yeah, I bet you probably didn't know this ability that's absolutely terrorizing the Gen 9 meta right now originated as Bee Barrel signature ability. If you don't know, unaware makes your Pokemon ignore the stat changes of your opponent. So if they've been dragon dancing and hope to make a sweep, no problem, just send out your super bulky Skeledurge or Dondozo and sponge hits until your opponent gets annoyed enough to switch out. Some other honorable mentions from this generation would include Storm Drain, Toxic Heal, and Iron Fist. I don't think these abilities have the same widespread impact that Adaptability or Unaware have, but they are remarkably useful in many situations. Storm Drain draws in all Water-type attacks to boost the user's special attack. This is especially useful in VGC, where Origin Pulse and Muddy Water were very common spread moves. Toxic Heal can make Gliscor and Breloom incredibly difficult to deal with in singles if you're not prepared for it, and it essentially gives them an immunity to a very common status condition. And although Iron Fist is only a 20% boost of punching moves, a far cry from the likes of Huge Power or Adaptability, it does apply to a wide array of attacks with exceptionally good type coverage. Well, if you thought Gen 4 had a lot to offer, then buckle up, because Gen 5 introduced a ton of abilities that would not only shape the meta, but also give viability to tons of undervalued Pokémon. First in line, we have Contrary, an ability that reverses your stat changes, which essentially means that your superior can spam Leaf Storm and watch the special attack skyrocket at the same time. And this ability has gone on to help tons of others, such as Spinda and Malamar, who can learn superpower, and Lorantis, who can, uh, no longer learn superpower for some reason. But hey, at least they had it for a little while. Superior is definitely the most notable user of this ability, though, and pretty much caused them to jump as far up the tier list as possible. This next ability is a bit of a strange one. Friend Guard has the potential to be one of the greatest abilities ever made, at least if you're a VGC player, as it reduces damage done to your ally by 25%. 
The issue is, I think Game Freak knows how good this ability would be, and so it's shackled to some pretty bad Pokémon. Mostly ones that you'd never consider using in a competitive landscape. Though, ironically, some players actually did start using Clefairy over Clefable in VGC, since it has this amazing ability. Next, let's talk about Prankster. This ability gives priority to any status moves and makes some Pokémon like Whimsicott the most annoying thing to fight in your entire life. In particular, the duo of Thunderous and Tornadus got a ton of mileage out of this in the Gen 5 meta. On the opposite end of the spectrum, but equally as good, is Magic Bounce. This ability will send status moves back at the opponent, anything from Toxic to Stealth Rocks. With a well-timed switch in, you can completely take the pressure off your team. And of course, while these next abilities aren't from Gen 5, they did become more widespread during this era. And that, of course, would be weather-setting abilities like Drought, Drizzle, and Sandstream. Not so much Snow Warning, at least not at this point in time. Hey, are you enjoying the video? Great, then why not subscribe? It's free, and you'll make me feel happy, so what's stopping you? Starting in Gen 6, abilities would become much more exclusive, but arguably far more powerful than anything we'd seen before. A prime example of this is Protean, mostly known for being on Greninja, but Kecleon and Meowskarada also have it. Plus, Libero is basically a reskin of this ability for Cinderace, so that may as well count. Being able to change types on the fly, even post-nerf in Gen 9, is insane. This ability can be used for both offensive and defensive purposes, which is what makes it so scary to go up against. And if your Pokémon has a wide enough move pool, like Greninja, they can overcome nearly any wall in their path. Up next is Tough Claws, which is basically just a medium between Iron Fist and Adaptability. This ability boosts damage done by contacting moves by 30%. Bear in mind, contact is different from physical. For example, Earthquake is a physical move, but you don't actually make contact with the opponent. But yes, most physical moves are contact moves. This ability used to be exclusive to Mega Evolutions, and Barbarical, but now it also belongs to Pokémon like Lycanroc and Berserker. And while I said I didn't want to discuss signature abilities, it's hard to not discuss these two. Parental Bond was the driving factor behind Mega Kangaskhan being as broken as it was, especially since it could use Power Up Punch twice to essentially gain a Swords Dance boost, while also breaking Focus Sashes or the Sturdy ability. And, um, also Delta Stream, but that's one of only a few reasons why Mega Rayquaza was so broken. Gen 6 may have been the gen to introduce terrains, but Gen 7 introduced something even more important, terrain-setting abilities. Originally, they were exclusive to the Tapus, but have gradually spread out over time. And trust me, they're just as good as they've always been, despite getting a nerf in Gen 8. This generation also gave us an ability similar to Friend Guard from Gen 5, in the sense that it's actually super good, but just isn't available on any good Pokémon right now. Stakeout. This ability doubles the damage done to an opponent if they switch in, and with switching being such an important component of battles, especially in singles, this ability can land you some crazy KOs. Unfortunately, as I said, most of these Pokémon probably aren't scaring anybody out, except maybe Mabostiff, who is certainly a decent Pokémon. And last but not least, with the ability that probably defined the generation, Beast Boost. This is basically a cracked-out version of Moxie that always boosts your highest stat after a KO. And since most Ultra Beasts' highest stat is usually attack or special attack, this can turn any of them into sweepers dangerously fast, especially Kartana or Faramosa. Alright, so remember at the beginning when I said I wouldn't be talking about signature abilities? Uh, yeah, about that. It turns out every single ability introduced in Gen 8 is actually a signature ability, so here's just a few highlights. Of course, Intrepid Sword had to be here. It's basically the anti-intimidate, and of course it went on a Pokémon with a 170 base attack stat, why do you ask? Transistor is basically just adaptability, but for Regieleki, and this proved to be so problematic that Gen 9 nerfed Transistor to only 30% power boost, but kept Dragon's Maw the same on Regidrago. It's about equity, not equality. I think everyone recoiled in their chairs when they first heard about Unseen Fist, an ability that allows Urshifu to hit through Protect, arguably one of the most important moves in the VGC format. If you thought this was good in Gen 8, it's only gotten better in Gen 9 now that Max Guard is no longer in the game. The one thing Unseen Fist couldn't break. Glacier and Spectrier also boasted Grim slash Chilling Nay, which is honestly just a reskin of Beast Boost, but worth mentioning. And for the lone non-legendary ability here, we have Power Spot. This is an ability exclusively designed for doubles as it powers up your teammates' attacks by 30%. But it's exclusive to Stonjourner, who is definitely not seeing any usage online, so that's a bit unfortunate. Great ability, though. And for Gen 9, it's mostly more the same, but there is one non-signature ability to talk about. Sharpness. Sharpness is basically the slicing move equivalent of Iron Fist, but instead of a 20% boost, it's 50%! If that isn't power creep in a nutshell, I don't know what is. 
Back to signature abilities though, Purifying Salt is half the reason Garganackle is a relevant Pokemon, as it protects from all statuses and even adds an extra resistance to ghost types. Not being able to poison an extremely tanky Pokemon like this one that can not only recover its HP, but also slowly sap yours with Salt Cure can sometimes make this Pokemon an unscalable wall. Shout out to Good as Gold, Goldango's ability while we're at it since it's basically the same thing minus the ghost resistance. But you know what's even better than a resistance? How about an immunity that also comes with stat buffs? This is where Doc's Bun's well-baked body comes in, offering it an immunity to fire but also giving it plus two to its defense. And this Pokemon already has a really high defense stat so the ability just synergizes with it extremely well. And finally we reach the last handful of abilities that'll scare any competitive player. First up is Commander, which is Tatsugiri's ability, but that hardly matters since Dondozo is the one using it to become an absolute machine. This pretty much turns it into the raid boss of your team. A 2v1 to this guy means nothing. And lastly, two abilities from the Ruinous Quartet, Sword of Ruin and Beads of Ruin. Now, realistically, all of the Ruinous Pokemon have fantastic abilities, but these two in particular just synergize with their own kit so well that it doesn't matter if you're playing singles or doubles, they will kill you. But hey, now that you know all about the best abilities, why not use your ability to leave a like on this video and subscribe for more videos just like this one. I'll see you guys next time.